Okay? So you see, despite Johnson's claims, the facts are very different. Any person from a third country who offers legal advice in any member state of the EU is going to land themselves in a whole lot of trouble. Just as if a French lawyer is giving advice in London, they're going to land themselves in trouble. Why? Because the lawyers in those individual countries never did and never will want to give away that slice of the pie. The legal profession is the epitome of a protectorate organisation. How many of you out there own your own property, no mortgage, and discover that when you want to sell your house, you're almost forced to employ a solicitor? You don't need a solicitor to sell a car. Okay, there's little paperwork needed by the seller of a property other than a clean title, certs of compliance, um, and some documents with regard to marriage status. Everything else has nothing to do with the seller. It's as it's caveat emptor, buyer beware. Okay, but when it comes to financial services, it is a very different story. Before Brexit, almost all commercial contracts regarding EU equities drawn up in London gave jurisdiction to UK courts to resolve any disputes. Contracts were drawn up in London, contracts were registered in London, and subsequently, if a dispute occurred, those cases were heard in London courts. Okay? Judgments were delivered and enforcement then followed. But now let's be clear. The court making a decision is one thing. Winning the case is great for the victorious party, but it doesn't mean jack unless the judgment cannot be enforced, unless the judgment rather can be enforced. Okay, pre-Brexit, that wasn't a problem because the UK was in the EU and subsequently then was a member of Lugano and judgments in London could be enforced anywhere in the EU or the EEA without the need to seek clarification from respective member states. Okay, there were, might be some major, some minor rather procedural hearings to establish how exactly you're going to enforce it. But the question of the judgment of the UK court wasn't brought into the equation at all, unless somebody was brain dead and didn't care how much their legal fees were going to be, so long as they could delay the outcome for, by whatever means necessary. But generally, 99.99999% UK gives the judgment, it's enforceable in Italy and Spain and Germany and Ireland. Okay, the UK and EU were due, but only according to British media, to sign a memo of understanding at the end of March to cooperate on financial services rules, which might smooth out the path to greater access for British businesses through the so-called equivalence rulings. But this was rubbish. They already had access to that, and there wasn't anybody in London that believed that story, not for a second. And it's no wonder. And let me tell you why. In July 2017, it was re revealed by Oliver Letwin that the UK had not even got a single trade negotiator in its entire civil service. And before the Brexit numpty say he was thrown out of the Conservative Party and therefore you can't believe him or he can't be trusted, let me remind you of two things. One, he was the guy that took over from the Oompa Loompa Frost as head of the, the EU department in the British government. Okay, which at the time was the biggest job in the entire service. And B, even Nigel Farage knew of the problem and suggested bringing in expertise required from places like Singapore and Canada, which by the way, the UK didn't do. They didn't bring them in. Now let's look at how the numpty screwed up London City. <coughs> Excuse me. Banking and finance is one of the rare examples of a sector in which the UK leads the world. UK does not lead the world in aeronautics, does not lead the world in pharma or in chemicals. There are very few things it leads the world in. But when it comes to financial services, it's the, it's the big boy, okay? It accounts for more than 3% of all employment in the UK. It produces more than 7% of its entire economic output, and it pays 11% of taxes receipts and generates a vital trade surplus with the EU of more than 20 billion a year, remembering that the EU accounts for 50% of our trade, okay? And yet the industry had been left to fend for itself on the other side of Brexit, because there was nothing in it for Brexit. But this was not unforeseen. See, as the fishing industry was seen as a more, by the fishing industry was seen by London Financial Services as a more expedient, more user-friendly political topic 
to relieve the pressure of the news that was leaking out from number 10 on just how bad Brexit was becoming, okay? Everything the experts said was roll, rolling out of the red carpet. And again, there will be many out there that still say, look, we need to give it more time. It's too soon to tell what's around the corner. And in many respects, this is correct. However, this does not mean that what is around the corner is a cute, cuddly toy. And as we've discovered so far, that around most new corners we turn into, we run into a bloody giant animal that's ready to feed on our carcass. And this applies to the service industries also. The line from the numpties is that all firms in the financial services industry are ultimately rule takers and this needs to change. Now, this is true. It is true. There's no question about that. You know, but here's the thing. Prior to Brexit, it was the UK financial gurus that were setting those rules. It wasn't the Germans, it wasn't the French. That was being led by the UK. And boys, that's going to change. And what what even the most ardent Brexiteer cannot argue against is that there has been sod all expansion in the services industry in London, as you can see in this graph. Now, and what you can also be seeing in, in, in this graph here is that there's been expansion in cities in Frankfurt and Paris and Dublin and Amsterdam. Now, these jobs are not low skilled, low paid positions. These jobs are high skilled, high paying positions the EU have taken the approach quietly that they will allow those experienced staff to relocate to the EU and they did it really quickly. But that will also change as respective countries' local voters will learn the craft of financial services and they will learn to provide the same service without the need for those companies, no matter where they're from, to pay relocation expenses along with housing and transport and school fees that they would have to endure for families who moved over. Okay, so there's a, there's a win-win for the companies. To give an example, the Institutes of Higher Education in Dublin have already adopted degree courses specifically for the services industry. They are simply replicating what they did 20 years ago when I was a kid to attract the big tech pharma and chemical industry that into Ireland from Europe, from America, that proved to be a very, very successful campaign and saved Ireland. UK universities cannot do that as there are zero opportunities because there are no incentives for foreign companies to locate in the market of the financial services because it has limited access to the biggest market in the world for such products. You know, the EU member states will exert pressure on their own companies to pull out of London. London will not be given equivalence. No way. And the industry will move slowly at first and accelerate as time goes by. And the proof is in the fact that nobody foresaw the speed at which legal firms would react. I didn't see it anyway. Now, as we discussed in previous videos, Ireland has received more than five thousand applications from UK-based lawyers to practice in Dublin. Five thousand. Why? Because the EU have made it crystal clear that just putting a blast plate on the wall in some service offices, that ain't going to cut it. It doesn't get around their requirement. Okay? For legal firms to have, they must have a real presence in an EU member state and that it should be fully integrated, it should be fully incorporated into that local economy. Brass plates will not be allowed to supply legal services on EU contracts when the real work is being done elsewhere. And EU contracts make up almost 50% of London's business. Okay? Guys, I know that video is a bit long, but it is important that you get it out there. Hope you see you tomorrow. Thanks if you've shared it. Thanks for subscribing. Keep up the good work. Take care.